Okay, I came to John Nicewanger's today and we are going to show in this video how to take your compost from either the Johnson Sioux method or it was Elaine Ingram on the other one that you've been working on and how to take it from the tote or wherever you're storing the compost and get it in the extractable form so you can apply it on your fields either in furrow applying it to your seeds or uh, spraying it and top dressing it on your ground which is what John's going to do top dressing it on wheat correct yes in furrow it's going this is going in furrow on our cover crop mix. oh perfect all right well sh let's show how, how what the process so we is. take this we have already put a bucket in here before jay got here so we won't dump it but you take this we'll dump it in here there's a screen with lots of holes stainless steel and we will extract it we'll take this water i'm gonna have to turn my pump on oh you're fine pause okay I went ahead and shut the volume off because of how uh, overpowering the the noise from the pump was. Um, it's not as bad if you're if you're there, um, but just for the video, I just wanted to shut it off. So, um, in this process, he just takes the uh, water that's run through the tanks, and he just keeps going over and over again in circles till it breaks down all the compost and um, it gets that through the filter and then all that's left is your wood particles your rocks and a little bit of trash the whole process only takes about like two to five minutes what you have left is your uh, coarse particles which in this case, it was the wood chips that didn't break down and the rocks. And rubber and plastic. Throw and so you have a dump pile over there? And then, yep, and this dump pile will be recycled through. We'll come in and these wood chips will go back into a compost pile. And that's how I got my worms. As they, I'm pretty sure they came out of that pile. They crawled up into it. So the next process then is uh, the extraction process. And so uh, these are 50 gallon per minute cones up there and we got two of them. So that gives us 60 gallon a minute. Right now we're processing about 2000 gallons. So it's gonna take us, I don't know what's the math on that roughly less than 30 minutes probably about 25 to 30 minutes we'll run this to extract it and uh, then we're ready to load it onto our sprayer um, when we pump it onto our sprayer we have a big uh, screen so as to filter all the debris anything in there that uh, we don't want to go through our system so what hose do you hook up to this and so, to put it on the plant? yeah there's quite a few combinations we go through in the whole process um right now where we're extracting we pull off our sides and we use that we just use gravity feed through a valve and we run that into our extractor which has a stainless steel screen inside here which i can show you later after we're done but it's got a stainless steel screen um, all the fine particles and stuff will go through that and come out the back or come out the sides and we'll run that through our pump up through our cyclones into those tanks and then we'll cycle it for about 30 minutes um, then when we switch over to uh, the cycling process we will take that green hose put it on here so we're pulling both our intakes are coming out of the tank one from the bottom one from the side do that for 60 minutes then we're ready to load when we get ready to load we will take that bottom hose and it'll go from this inlet to our screen and then that side that green hose will stay connected to the bottom and we always leave and cycle through our cyclones and that keeps our water at this point i accidentally cut john off what he was going to say is that's what keeps oxygen flowing freely through the extract in the tank Okay, so I had two main clips that I was using, and uh, one of them, John talks about the pump, the other one he doesn't, and I use most of them from the one he doesn't, so I throw this part in about the pump, and John talks um, about the it The next here. thing is our pump. We've got a, uh, basically it's a trash pump. It's a, 
Um, and we've got it hooked up to electricity. We've got four inlets, two inlets into the intake and two inlets on the outtake. So, okay. that, so John, what is the best way to apply this? So the research has shown that the seed drench or soaking the seeds in it gives us the best uh, results on the roots for sure. Okay, as far as the seed responding to yeah. it. Okay. Um, in Australia, there's quite a bit of research and they are applying it on the seed. They're applying it in furrow and then they're doing one to two passes over the top. And they are seeing huge uh, nutrient dense crops that are coming out of that. They've created their own marketing scale or uh, Christine Jones is, and there's several other people that can tell you more about it. But anyways, they've created a very nutrient dense crop that they're growing in eight inches of moisture uh, with this method and they are surviving and, and having good yields and so so when you're applying it with your with your uh, sprayer how many gallons an acre are you doing and how many pounds of of uh, compost are you mixing per gallon so we're applying it uh, depending on my thoughts but usually 20 or 25 gallons I put in the compost we extracted at basically one pound per acre that I expect to apply so okay uh, usually it's about 10 buckets per 6,000 gallons okay got you and then measure. a bucket's 33 pounds yeah of... and a bucket's 33 to 36 pounds okay every time we've measured it so gotcha uh, let's see that comes out on my sprayer it's 1200 gallons comes out to about uh, 60 acres a tank full okay uh, Another way to look at it is it's about one, uh, five pounds per 100 gallons. Okay. There's another way to look at that. Okay, so after I got done interviewing John, um, he started the extract process. And so that's what he does here for the next 30 minutes is extracts uh, the compost and, and gets it in the liquid form. I actually stopped the video early because I wanted to go look at John's cover crops and see what his soil health was looking like in the field behind the tanks. John uh, is about 30 miles east of me, and we are both in a situation where we're both extremely dry. Even with it as dry as it's been, um, you can still see some good aggregates um, in that particular picture. Even here with the uh, the pea, he had some platiness in that spot because it's a place where the, the tired plast passed over, but um, his soil is functioning pretty well. Um, you can see it in that picture. He's got a lot of nodules on his peas. At this point, everything's done and ready to go. So we took this uh, sample in the bottle and took it to John's office so we could look at it under the microscope. Unfortunately, uh, John's uh, computer wasn't able to connect to his microscope this particular day. Um, so I contacted Next Level Ag, I sent some soil samples to them, and uh, they sent us back some pictures of stuff that you want to look for when you're uh, looking underneath the microscope. Now I will say this is something that I know nothing about. I don't know anything about identifying any of these microorganisms underneath the microscope, but I'm not intimidated by it, and you shouldn't be either. It's something that anybody can learn and if you want to do this type of agriculture it's something that you need to learn so that you can identify those as well as the negative uh, bacteria okay so now we're ready to talk about loading it onto your tractor or your uh, spray rig so john shuts the valve off on that bottom hose uh, takes it off attaches it to the top part there and then attaches the other end to the filter and then he's ready to pump from the cone bottoms uh, onto his uh, his planter.
So our tractor is a 550 quad track. We've got two tanks on the front of it. Uh, both tanks are 300 gallons, so that gets us 600 gallons on the front. So we go from the front with a line. We use our um, inch and a quarter hose, I believe, or inch and a half. We've got a on-off valve at the back of the tractor and a quick disconnect so we can disconnect our planter whenever we need to. And then we run that line all the way to the back. And back here we've got a 400 gallon tank that rides on the hitch. Uh, in the drill, this is a crust buster 45 foot drill. With an all plant opener. And then we have a 350 bushel capacity air cart on the back. Close out talking about some of the results that John's seen on the 46 acre field right there by his house that I show pictures of his growing cover crop earlier on in the video. So on that particular field, he's been doing cover crops since 2010. In 2017, he grew a corn crop there and it was his first year of applying compost extract. He applied it at a higher rate than 20 gallons uh, an acre. Um, but anyway, that first year he raised 90 bushel corn with no FOSS applied, no nitrogen applied, just the compost extract. His neighbors did raise 120 bushel corn, but where his input cost were nothing, uh, he was extremely profitable in that system. In 2018, he had a cover crop there um, and grazed cattle on it. And then in 2019, he raised another corn crop. Uh, that year, it was only 70 bushels an acre, but his cows got out and ate a good portion of it. So in the spots the cows didn't hit, he said his monitor hit 150 bushels. So kind of a, a lost year as far as knowing what the exact results were. But again, still remaining profitable, not having to put or not having put any inputs in that field in the last four years. So clearly a system that is is working for him and I believe will work for farmers in any environment, especially if it's going to work in arid western Kansas where our annual precipitation is 16 inches of rain a year um, and John's a little bit better but not much better than that. And so if it works in our area, I'm sure it's uh, something that is going to work all over America. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video uh, as much as I enjoyed making it. And, um, you know, we've been doing cover crops uh, since 2016. And, um, you know, when it comes to compost and applying compost extract, I don't want to give off the illusion uh, that I'm somehow an expert. Um, literally, we just started building our bioreactors this year. Um, we're not going to be ready to apply compost until uh, 2021. And so, um, you know, if you're watching this video, you're, you're going through the process just, just like I am. But um, the reason I felt like it was important to make a video, even though I'm not a veteran like John or some of these people that are doing this in Australia, is because the soil health principles are extremely important to me and um, raising healthier crops and um, healthier produce uh, from an agricultural standpoint is extremely important to me. So I want to get this information out there to other farmers so that they can know that there's a, a better way, another way um, to raise crops. And so anyway, if you want to like and uh, subscribe to our channel, you'll see how um, things change on our operation and see how we're able to integrate this into what we're doing. And um, it's going to be an awesome journey. So I hope you guys choose to join. Um, or, or like and subscribe to our channel and uh, see how, how things uh, progress for us. Uh, I want to say thank you. Um, thanks a lot to John for everything he's done for me and, and helping me uh, get going in this process. Um, if you have any questions, uh, not only will I do my best to answer your questions, um, I'm going to, like John will answer questions that you have. So if you guys have questions, feel free to a um, ask them in the comments below and we'll uh, answer your questions the best of our abilities. So Anyway, stay tuned for more videos on uh, cover crops, soil health, and uh, applying compost extract. Have a great day.